the 19th of May, 2022. Make sure to go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, also www.ladydorybell.com, one and the same. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like my official YouTube videos. And if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. That etiquette and respect is so important because unlike my ex-in-laws, who seemed to have an opinion that may have been a bit more than what they actually were and are, as far as importance, there are those factors. So. When the Fort Worth Zoo occurred regarding McCoy Elementary School and Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District, it was known about the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. My ex-in-laws, one particularly Susie Marie Nichols Lopez at that point in time, she's remarried to someone with the last name of Sweeney or Sweetie, something of that nature, whatever. And her first husband, Joe um, Lopez, he had been in and out of prison due to DWIs, DUIs, so on and so forth, an illegal immigrant into the United States of America. His eldest daughter, Brianna Marie Lopez, or as Susie Marie Nichols Lopez had called her a brat, she had been dating an individual who worked at the Fort Worth Zoo the time when my daughter had a field trip to the Fort Worth Zoo. She had already gotten in trouble because she decided to take a cell phone and play a voicemail message to my daughter who had lost her biological father less than a year before. When she chose to do this, this was shortly after Grandpa Nichols' funeral. This is when Brianna Marie Nichols Lopez thought it would be a good idea to my daughter to listen to a voicemail that was from her dead father within the time frame of Grandpa Nichols' funeral and did not understand why I was enraged as a mom to my daughter and my son. So when that occurred and my daughter explained to me in my car or my van at the time, I pulled the van over so damn quick on whatever road it was on the way from wherever we were to wherever we were going when it came to my ex-in-laws in the car. I pulled that car. There are those who understand this. Remember, I was born and raised in New Jersey in 1980s and 1990s, but it don't matter because those who understand this particular reference point, so my ex-sister-in-law was in the car behind mine. I pulled my car over so damn quickly that you could probably have seen smoke trails from me hitting the brakes so quickly, as anybody knows, the average speed limit in the area of that in the state of Texas is about 65 to 80 miles an hour. So I slammed on my brakes, pulled that car over, and anybody who knows how that goes from their own childhood understands. And if you don't know what that is from childhood, well, in my defense, she did not have the same response or dealing with in regards to what I would have dealt with as a child. So as a, for a clarification of the difference, if my biological father had pulled that car over the way I pulled that car over, she would have gotten the belt instead. So what she didn't get was the belt. What she did not get was my hand. She didn't get that. What she did get was a, um, a very in-depth opinion where I had raised my voice and had been in her face where you would have thought she was in basic training to that level. And um, 
you know. While she tried to cry, she was not given permission to speak. And so because she was not given permission to speak when she tried to make an attempt to speak, she then kept her mouth shut. Now, her mom in the car behind, who had absolutely nothing to say at the time, who could have gotten out of the car, I did explain to her what Brianna did. I let her know that her eldest daughter had played a voicemail message of her dead father, or my ex-sister-in-law's dead brother, for my daughter to hear. And told my daughter that that was what she thought my daughter needed to hear in comparison to having any common sense. So we already had a difference of opinion in regards of quite a few things. Like for example, where I did not want to be on the WIC system permanently, the way my ex-sister-in-law did, I did what I could to get off of that so that way I didn't have to rely on that system. Because I wanted to be capable to progress forward. And while I understood that that system is in place in the needs of, I knew that if I could get myself to a better what have you, that I wouldn't have to be involved with that. And it could go and assist someone who it would actually be beneficial towards in comparison to relying on that. It was an actual debate in my ex-mother and ex-father-in-law's house because my ex-sister-in-law actually tried to convince me as to how she thought it would be acceptable to steal from the system in comparison to ever seeing how important it is for those who actually need it in comparison. So we had a lot of differences of opinion and when it was found out that I had gotten my VA, and I had no longer been a part of it. My ex-sister-in-law tried to convince me to sell her those aspects instead. And even though I wouldn't be within the category of, and so I refused to do so. That was a bitter situation because I wouldn't partake in that. And I thought it was illegal However, my ex-sister-in-law tried to convince me that it wasn't that big of a deal. I explained to her I was not willing to only be a breeder of children. I wanted to make sure that with my life, whatever I chose to do, I would be capable to take care of my son and my daughter. And that was it as far as children. Otherwise, once my son and my daughter were past a certain age, I would then go and do what I needed for myself. And I didn't want to be a breeder of children because it is a choice to go through certain things. And so she had twins after a certain point in time when I would guesstimate around the time would be when her two daughters from her first marriage had moved out. Most likely that would be about the time frame she got pregnant. Probably didn't expect it to be with twins. However, I'm gonna guesstimate that's about the time frame. So anyway, because then she wouldn't have them in the capacities of regarding the system. Of course. Common sense. Anyway, so in the year of 2009, when I had earned my 26 scuba diving certifications and had taken one of my nieces with me out to the Georgia and Florida areas, uh, that particular niece was informed to not rub it in to her brother and sister because of what I personally had planned. Of course, her being the middle child, 
as far as certain factors, hypothetically, as well as the situations regarding my other ex-sister-in-law, Mary Evangelina, maiden named Nichols Lopez, or Osteen, and uh, her two daughters, Sandra Marie Osteen and Ariel Nicole Osteen with David Osteen, and remember the blue ID card situation in 2001, those particular people who I wasn't ever friends with, especially in the time frame of 2001, we weren't friends. That was literally the first time I met those people. And that was it. That was enough in that reference. So we didn't ever talk and we didn't ever get along. So those people out in Georgia, we weren't ever friends before the blue ID card situation. That was the first time I met those people. I didn't ever talk with them on the phone either. Didn't have anything to do with those people. There's literally only three times that I ever had seen those people. First one is 2001, in the and I'm talking in reference to the state of Texas, so that, and knowingly, so 2001, regards of that time frame as to David Osteen's basic training, second time, my dead ex-husband's funeral, and third time, Grandpa Nichols' funeral. Those are the only three times that I knowingly had anything to do with those people. However, if those people decided without any legal rights and without any legal authority to inject themselves into my life, and I didn't ever recognize them. At any point in time, from 2000 to whatever possibility of, at the time frame of whatever year, that is a level that we are not friends. That is a level we are not associates. That is the level that I wouldn't ever wanna have anything to do with those people ever again. Because why would I ever waste my time with individuals that would ever make that choice and then try to claim that they would ever mean something to me. The answer for this lecture is, I wouldn't ever wanna have anything to do with those people. And if there were ever any wrongful, illegal, false charges against me, then that would translate to all of those charges needing to be dropped and those people be investigated because you better be 100% clear in comparison, especially when it comes to quite a few things. So if my other ex-sister-in-law decided to stir up needless drama because two sisters, how would that go? And then both having two daughters at around the same time frame, and you know, those types of those situations, one stayed in Texas, one went to Georgia, those particular factors. So I've already updated my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanbelang.com. Now, while I was kind, that didn't translate to those people, meaning to the depth level that they may have thought that they meant to me. Because while at the exact same time, those individuals did similarly to Illinois, how they knew how supposedly how people are from New Jersey. And yet, that's the facts. So in 2008, my ex-in-law, her daughter, which at one point would have been considered a niece to me, um, decided to do that regarding the voicemail to my daughter in 2008 through a temper tantrum because I would not tolerate that choice. I did not assault her physically. My words may have hurt her feelings, which meant nothing to me compared to my daughter and my son. That's the facts. I also informed her that if she were to ever have children, I promise she would know what my wrath is for any capacity of. 
And if she ever had children and ever was capable to even get to the point of my son and my daughter's ages at that time, that she would understand in regards of why I had every right to chew her out because she wanted to try to complain when we got back to Grandma Nichols' house at that point because she was upset that Grandma Nichols did not defend her. Grandma Nichols had repeatedly had to deal with certain things when Brianna Marie Lopez or Brianna Marie Nichols Lopez growing up as a child as to the problems in that reference. And so Grandma Nichols at that time when Brianna tried to complain, Grandma Nichols informed Brianna she was in the wrong for causing the problems to begin with. Because if she did not play that, Ill, that, that voicemail to my daughter, I would not have yelled at her. Grandma Nichols knew that Brianna shouldn't have done that to begin with. And so when Brianna tried to complain to Grandma Nichols, Grandma Nichols did the same thing she did before when it came to Brianna. And so it was as it was. Marissa was offended because that was her older sister and I explained it meant nothing what her opinion was. She wasn't ever going to know what it is. So she didn't have any right or authority to ever speak in those references. Again, she also wasn't asked for her opinion in that reference. And I went on a few other tirade situations. Joseph, the youngest, just went to go stand by his mom because he knew better than to try in certain regards as to my particular um, viewpoint because he had not ever seen me angry before. And so, but him being the youngest. And so if he, especially with technology, decided on video games or what have you and told his opinions, but didn't give the context, well, there are situations and those 10 commandments are genuinely important. So then you have my other ex-sister-in-law, Mary of Angelina Nichols Osteen, if she had been informed of, and her opinion when, of course, it wouldn't matter because it wouldn't matter to me at all. So if she had any opinion that, again, wouldn't matter, realistically, she would need to accept the fact that Brianna, knowing the age of Brianna in the time frame of 2008, had made the choice to play a voicemail to my daughter of her dead father's voice at the time of Grandpa Nichols's death and funeral. That would be those people, yet again, needing to accept the responsibility for their failures. That would be those people's lack of common sense fully be, being shown in those references. In addition to quite a few of other situations regarding those individuals, lacking the ground to stand on, lacking common sense as even stable furniture in regards of what could be moved around in a physical viewpoint as to a reference of thoughts because they wouldn't even have sand to build themselves upon in that particular metaphor. So, in regards of a little over a year later, the Fort Worth Zoo. And I had moved from San Antonio, Texas to Carrollton, Texas, these other situations. There was an individual in scuba diving 
And it wouldn't surprise me if those individuals all of a sudden had whatever, what have you, because of the physical viewpoint in comparison to me paying attention to that. Again, it wasn't until 2019, 2020 that I realized certain physical attributes in comparison, because unlike some people, I actually get to know the person for who they are in comparison to the physical attributes. It is an annoyance when it comes to online though, because with the online aspects, those particular situations are not in the same capacity as in person, face to face in person. So in those references, individuals online who put different pictures that I don't have the opinion to bother with, well, that is a, well, that would be AI in those references, even if they are a human being because that's just the facts. I wouldn't want to bother with quite a few situations because why would I? If you want to start any relationship, whether it's acquaintanceship, friendship, reconnection of whatever type, as far as with a different image than who you actually are, well then again, in a metaphor regarding online, that is the starting point of what you are looking at in reference to whatever capacity of. In my opinion. So where the knowledge is of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, among several other factors, that is something for people to keep in mind. If they ever have any problems with somebody in person, face to face in person, lying to them, why would they? If their choice is to do something such as that, that doesn't make sense. Additionally, they wouldn't have the right to ever be upset if somebody picked up on that and didn't want to be around that. Because why would they? So in that hypothetical of pictures that are more than 10 years old and utilizing that as an avatar or something in your physical features in a larger way has changed or whatever as far as the differing opinions of what it could be, I personally don't have patience for that and I can't be the only one at all whatsoever. And so there is the fact of what occurred regarding how I wound up in Washington state with my son after what occurred in reference to my daughter. That's not um, something that anybody that I would ever consider would ever be a worthwhile family member to me. So if that's whether in regards of my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister and or ex-in-laws, there is no value or worth of those people involved in my life or my son's life or my daughter's life in any capacity of, especially in reference to the long and longest terms possible. as per whatever proof. So in reference to the year of 2009 and those situations, if whether that individual was sent to me and or that individual was contacted by my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological sister, this is what's wrong with social media in my opinion. Sure, you can have whatever connections, but see those connections have to be truthful when they contact or what have you. So I haven't ever contacted somebody on somebody else's friends list and pretended to be more to that individual than I actually was. 
I knew better than that because it's literally in writing in the technological sphere. So in this hypothetical, such as my ex-in-laws and what they're accustomed to by that point in time, and or my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological sister and or relatives in those regards, whatever they're accustomed to by that point, um, I, I didn't allow that. That's kind of a really big situation. Because anybody who knew me in person, face to face in person, despite whatever aspects of, knew for a fact how my opinion had been in regards of coattail writing. They would know if they were contacted by anybody if I personally would consider it as coattail writing. Those references. And that hypothetical. So then there's my scuba diving. And my ex-sister-in-law, Mary Evangelina Nichols Osteen, in reference to her husband, David Osteen, not mine, not a friend of mine, not a family member of mine, don't let that social media fool you. And then their daughters, Sandra Marie Osteen and Ariel Nicole Osteen, after my scuba dive, which again, that phone call, that grouping of phone calls, where those three regarding Susie Marie Nichols Lopez, Mary Evangelina Nichols uh, Osteen, and Tony Walker Nichols contacting me when I was in Florida after my Vandenberg scuba dive is pretty very much circumstantial evidentiary aspects as to the actual proof of intention regarding those people, as well as their knowledge of during the time frame of August 2009. That additionally lets people know whether or not, especially with the conjunction aspects of my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and relatives and connections of, as to whether or not there was actual genuine concern for my best interests, as well as my son and my daughter and our family's best interests, compared to whatever hypotheticals would be capable to prove. And again, not an interest of mine to be involved with those types of people. What would there ever be to justice in that hypothetical of my ex-in-laws contacting me, knowing apparently after the Vandenberg, because what would that ever translate to? other than my right to not ever need to be involved with them again, my son's right to know the truth, my daughter's right to know the truth, and the justice that would be mandatory in regards of. Because obviously in reference to my gear, that would be on U.S. soil, in the United States of America. Wouldn't matter what state it would be, because that's common sense. So in regards of Florida, and then back to the state of Texas regarding those situations, then in this hypothetical, of course, just this hypothetical, that my ex-in-laws had a different viewpoint as to the value of life, well, then they shouldn't be surprised after 2010, as far as my concern. Because obviously I wouldn't need to be associated with those types of people and they themselves would not need to have anything to do with my life ever. They would need to stay out of my life permanently. They would need to not cause any needless problems to me, and they would need to permanently stay out of everything that I choose to be a part of. In any capacity of, in the overall generalized way, 100%, there wouldn't be any need for their involvement ever. 
in my opinion. So those types of those people regarding a hypothetical as to there's the Fort Worth Zoo, Brianna Marie Nichols Lopez, her first child, baby daddy, worked at the Fort Worth Zoo. And so if the Gang of Eight reference and a metaphor would be either the children of my ex-in-laws, because there would be the five children regarding between Mary Evangelina Nichols Osteen and Susie Marie Nichols Lopez, as well as Tony Walker Nichols and his wife Gail, her three two, three children, one son, two daughters, mixed with my ex-sister-in-law Susie Marie Nichols Lopez's two daughters and one son in the reverse order, and then Mary Evangelina Nichols Osteen regarding her two daughters, that were to be a proverbial gang of eight, those children who I warned those people about throughout the years would need to be held responsible for each and every needless problem and choice that they decided to make. And since they would be the first generation in a full netted situation as to the technological ways regarding since the turn of the millennium. And they would have varying age ranges. Well, they would be prime candidates that would volunteer themselves to be a part of that. And so, while I was born and raised in New Jersey and having dealt with individuals who have claimed that they know how people are from New Jersey, well, they would have the influences of the biological adults in their lives as to what the patterns of behavior would be. And so they would be the first simulated round essentially when you think about it, as to the varying levels of, because you'd have multiple areas and demographics in one situation. So if this just were so happened to be, in reference to Gail, Tony Walker Nichols's wife, or his second wife, her eldest son would be a starting point as to the influences of both Tony Walker Nichols and his biological father as to how those demographics would be capable to be utilized in those metadata sort of ways because of however much had already been online and computers and video games would have such a plethora of data to be capable to get all that information as to patterns of behavior, just in the aspects between male and female connections. Then you have his eldest of two sisters, Amber, with the same situations, and then the youngest of two sisters, Tori. Then you'd have those other aspects, but the connected portions, after the length of time in the areas of, those three would be a starting point to the viewpoint of eight. And, and because of the area, because Oklahoma, there would be the varying degrees of. And so that would be a hypothetical in that technological viewpoint of the evaluations of patterns of behavior of people in person, face-to-face -face in person, in reference to choices as to free will. Whether or not they have morals and ethics and values as they so much to claim, such as a reborn Southern Baptist family. For an example, because for those individuals who understand the difference between the various Judeo-Christian values and systems of 
Well, the Protestant denomination, while we have been capable to acknowledge and accept the starting point of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, for those who know the Apostles' Creed, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. But you'd have to know that, whereas Baptists, and especially Southern Baptists, they don't like acknowledging the Holy Roman Catholic Church. They don't like acknowledging other churches. They actually get bitter if there's another church, like anybody who knows anything, about religion. You want to piss off a Baptist? Put a different denomination church next door. Doesn't matter which denomination it is. Doesn't matter at all. It could be, they, they, the only ones are usually temples that they're kinda-ish okay with because they know about the Torah part. But you want to piss off some Baptists? Pick another denomination, and you really want to upset them. Put a non-denominational church right next to a Baptist church. Watch them lose their, mm, I promise you, <laughs> I promise you they will complain about every possible aspect without ever actually knowing, and they will assume in so many capacities of in comparison to, well, my ex-brother-in-law and his second wife became Reborn Southern Baptists, and the description I just gave is a Northern Baptist. That's not a reborn Southern Baptist, and that is not a Southern Baptist, which anybody who knows the Baptist faith would actually know that. Now, the Northern Baptists, they can tolerate other religious-ish backgrounds as long as they can actually have a discussion with them in a calm manner in the Judeo-Christian capacity. So my biological mother and biological father, as well as Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, did not pay attention to that when a bunch of us in the youth group were sent from Old Tenet Presbyterian Church to Baptist Camp Lebanon, which is an irony because Pastor McKenzie went into the background as to the history of the Presbyterian faith. And one of the really important factors was the breakdown from the Jewish and aspects of the Holy Roman Catholic Church into the different denominational sects from Orthodox to the different types of Orthodox to the um, Calvinists and Lutherans and the Protestants and so on and so forth. And so there were a few of us who made attempts to explain. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but because of the way the youth group situation was during that time frame, you know, instead of those other females and males ever having common sense to pay attention to detail, those people complained in comparison because they didn't get to go to Baptist Camp Lebanon. They were sad that they didn't get to do that instead. It's really no different than certain other people that have complained about anything of my life, or it's not ever anything I could ever understand why anybody would ever complain because they didn't have to deal with the actualities of those types of people that have tried to complain to me and then actually wanted my sympathy really didn't ever make sense to me because it literally was each and every time they knew what I had already been dealing with or had dealt with and then they actually wanted my sympathy because they went through a far lesser version of what I dealt with and it was one of those, I didn't understand the lack of common sense to that level at all. I, I mean, I, I, I could go on a large amount of situations where it just didn't ever make any sense. Because 
They wanted their feelings acknowledged in comparison to fixing and repairing situations and progressing forward. It's really weird to me. I've had this occur throughout my life. It's been honestly quite a bit of an annoyance because it realistically has been, so let me end it in like my childhood, you know, certain people that would know what I dealt with regarding Mike and Anna, though would try to complain to me about their mom or dad taking away something that they didn't have to deal with what I dealt with growing up. And then they would get upset that I didn't have sympathy for them when they literally watched in comparison to doing something that actually would have been helpful or assistive. It's kind of the most amount of lack of common sense because any of those individuals that literally would be, well, why, why would you think that I should have any sensations in regards of when you yourself could have assisted? It is literally you being hypocritical regarding my life if you actually think that I should have sympathy for you, especially if you caused any needless problems to me, I'm not ever going to have sympathy in regards of you yourself. We're, we're, we're not on that level. So the youth group congregants, we, we didn't get along in a lot of capacities. So they also had been upset because when I was in fifth grade, they actually got to see who they actually were in the church. And so while they didn't have to deal with me being in church, they had to deal with quite a few other factors. So whether in Sunday school, they had to actually pay attention or actually had to do work or actually had to assist when it came to volunteering, or actually had to make genuine attempts in comparison to what they had been doing before, when they actually had to step up to the plate in the time frame when I was in fifth grade, those people in youth group got to learn who they actually were. And what they could and could not deal with. But when I returned to church, you know, after I got better, those people then started to think they had a right to complain in comparison to being appreciative and happy. See, they didn't ever have a right to complain to begin with. They should have been happier because they themselves wouldn't have to deal with certain things because of the knowledge that I'd go and take care of situations because of who I am. However, when they made the choice not to do certain things, I made the choice to take a step back because I was not willing to tolerate certain things. I was not going to tolerate listening to them whine or complain about what they had to deal with when I was in fifth grade. They actually tried to get sympathy from me, knowing what I was dealing with, and I just had no care or concern for that, because why would I? The knowledge of what I was dealing with, in comparison to just having discussions, they wanted to complain about what was nothing remotely close to the level of what I personally dealt with, and so I just left. It wasn't worth my patience or my time because that's just the facts. It's common sense. And when those people when in fifth grade didn't even tell me what occurred, they wanted to hint at certain things, knowing that I wasn't anywhere at church, knowing I wasn't anywhere near the vicinity, they wanted to do little hinting games and there was a few that situations were as they were. It was New Jersey, it was the 1990s. We had a discussion 
And that's what it is. And when I was done with my discussion regarding those people, I was done with my discussion regarding those people. This is how that goes. They made attempts to try, and I informed them they would have to do it a specific way. When they tried to subvert and do it a different way, sometimes there was a conversation, and sometimes I just wouldn't be anywhere near them. So they had the option of doing things my way, doing things my way, or doing things my way. Because if they did things their way, I would still do things my way. So when they tried what they tried, it became, I don't want to have this involvement. It's very simple. You are going to do things my way, or I'm going to do things my way. And do not complain because I know what's best for myself, especially when it comes to having survived what I had. So it's one of those, do things my way or stay out of my way. Do not make things any more difficult because we are not friends, especially in that regard. And um, I understand that you became closer friends while I was dealing with mono Epstein, Barbaritis, Lyme's disease and the flu all at the same time, but that's you. So while you might have gotten closer, that's you who got closer to one another. In comparison, you and I, we did not get closer. We got further apart. And they had an issue with that at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church when I informed them of that. They thought that I would just jump on in and everything would be like it was in comparison to having any common sense at all, whatsoever. And so as time went on, time went on and then moved to Illinois. Wasn't any love lost for me in regards of certain situations at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church because as far as the youth group was concerned, they weren't who were my friends regarding the congregants. They may have thought so, but they know how many times they had complained about me speaking with adults. So while I spoke with adults and they complained, that's the exact aspect. So while I was having discussions with individuals in suits, they complained because they weren't having discussions with the people in suits. They were in the nursery doing whatever. They complained about what have you in those different ways. And then they tried complaining to their parents while their parents were having discussions as far as other situations about the fact that they felt that their feelings were more important because they wanted to speak with individuals in suits as well. Be careful what you wish for um, <laughs> or hope for because there were a few that said that they hoped that they got to speak with people in suits and I warned them, <laughs> you might not really think that's as good of an idea, depending on what the reason is that those suits might show up in comparison. And those people from church didn't believe me. They thought that there wasn't any discussion with a suit that could ever go wrong. This was in the 1990s, for anybody who knows at this point in time. And so they were jealous of people who were talking with suits. And these youth groupers literally threw temper tantrums 
saying that they didn't care what the discussion was for them to speak with suits. This is the 1990s that they said that in New Jersey. And I warned them because I was reading the newspaper. <laughs> I was also discussing, but we weren't talking about that. Nonetheless, those people were very upset that they weren't talking with suits. They said it didn't matter what they talked with suits about. I told them, I think you should rethink what you think about that. They said they could do whatever they wanted. So that's technically the first generation. My ex-in-laws would be the second generation of children. So Old Town of Presbyterian Church, well, I guess I should clarify that as far as um, the viewpoint now in the year 2022. So if that were to be a thing, you've got New Jersey, Old Town of Presbyterian Church and aspects of and regards of. That's in the 1980s to 1990s and onward. Then you have Illinois, the areas of and onward. So, you know, depending on the time frame. So about 13, 15 years in the state of New Jersey regarding, and then however many years regarding my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister being in Illinois. So that was, 1998 to 2003, so that's about five years, which is about half the time, a little less than half the time, but when it comes to technology, you know, and then, um, then the time frame regarding my ex-in-laws is to a third level among other aspects of regarding choices and personal patterns of behavior. So usually I make attempts to warn people because I can see certain things, but other people assume whatever they assume. So my ex-in-laws didn't pay attention to the fact that I was only awake, or maybe they did, but if they did pay attention to the fact that I was only awake from my coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and that was an improper situation, well, that lets them know that we weren't friends. Because if it was because of the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, as was explained in whatever capabilities of proof, well, we're not friends. We obviously weren't ever friends because a friend wouldn't do that. And if they think that's what friendship is, well, then they're sadly mistaken, especially when it comes to me. So there's no need for their involvement in my life at all, whatsoever, because legally they didn't even have the authority to, realistically. I had made multiple attempts to have employment as soon as I was put on temporary retirement duty leave. As soon as I was working at Together, that didn't work out because of the after effects of my head injury. My headaches and migraines, the second that I had to go to the emergency room because my headache turned to a migraine, that was an issue. When it came to Chili's, which was after Olive Garden, by the way, had to stop working at Olive Garden because of the situations then, so then was the together, then was the car wash location briefly, and then was Chili's. There were multiple employments that my headaches and migraines, it did not matter regarding the situations. So within the time frame of working at Chili's and the way that went, and the time frame of Wick and all that was at the point of. And 
that was the end of it. So I made attempts in what ways I could as far as volunteering until I could do other things to be capable as best as I could. Whereas my ex-in-laws, they just went more towards the system instead. Each of my ex-in-laws did as they chose. So where I did what I could to not be in that system, those people wanted to be in that system. Then you have the situations regarding the ACA and Obamacare, and that's literally what those individuals had chosen. As far as those factors, because they thought they knew better. So you got the first group of those eight children regards to Oklahoma and that factor. Then you have Fort Worth regarding Brianna, Marissa, and Joseph. And then you have Georgia in regards to Ariel and Sandra. So there's those particular patterns of behavior in conjunction to the patterns of behavior in reference to those biological adults to those people. Then you have the differing factor. Me, hey, my son, my daughter, and I as a family. And where I made promises to my son and my daughter, I did what I could to keep my promises as best as I could. And so while other people in reference to those who could have easily assisted in the correct ways instead, well, we're not family. And so because of the way situations went, there's no need for them to be involved in my existence at all, ever. We're not family. We're not friends. We don't need that. I personally don't need that. So in those particular references where they didn't have any right or authority to ever actually get involved, ever. See, it's not within the constitutional rights to bear false witness. There are legal situations to that. So those people who would be my ex-in-laws were not friends. Don't let that social media fool you. Don't allow that title to fool you. That'd be ignorant, especially regarding certain people. So in that reference, I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I have every right to say no and not want to be a part of them at all. I've made that abundantly clear, especially most recently since the updating. So while some of those people might like to wish otherwise, again, no. My son and my daughter are related to them, not me. I'm not related to them. Don't try to pretend that there's an allowance because I have already made it abundantly clear. I do not give that allowance. It's a fact. So the situations from the time frame of my scuba diving, well, that literally proves whether or not we were friends. Because when you have David Osteen and Mary Osteen having lived in Georgia, they had the opportunity to speak the truth on the spot. Their choice to fail and not do so correctly, that's over. When it comes to their whatever related aspects of Sandra and Ariel, we're not associated. That's over. Then in regards of my other ex-sister-in-law, Susie Marie Nichols Lopez, sure, she may not have known certain things, but if she had someone inform her, well, that's over. Don't need anything in regards to friendship. We're not friends. There's no right to my life when it comes to that. They don't have any rights to be involved with anything of mine, especially after what occurred in regards to my daughter, my son, and I. And if there's anything in regards of Brianna Marie Lopez as to her baby daddy during the time frame in reference to the Fort Worth Zoo, that's over. Done. No coming back from those people. That's it.
don't need to be involved with that, and they didn't have any right to involve themselves in my life to begin with at all, whatsoever. Don't make that mistake. Don't care in what capacity either. I have the right to say no, because it's my life, it's not theirs. They don't have any right or authority, no matter how much they might wish otherwise. So then there's the needless problems of those people and those types thinking that they could possibly because of the failures of social media. To clarify that, because just because a button says friend, that doesn't translate to that. Just because a button might not be changed to acquaintance or follower or whatever, whatever, that's kind of a situation regarding social media that's obviously far different. Whether it's to Facebook or any other type. So in regards of my scuba diving, what should have occurred still hasn't. Obviously, I've written about it how I went to go and make attempts to get health care, but instead of people speaking with me honestly, I didn't get any anywhere with anything of that because why would there be? I mean, it would make sense to actually do so, but the failures in regards of each and every attempt, whether in regards of 2009, 2010, including 2019 and 2020 and 2021. So that shows whether or not you actually appreciate life. Then there's the aspects of my Medal of Honor art project trips. You better recognize my ex-in-laws were not ever allowed or invited in any capacity. I don't care about the dotted line signing. When it comes to my scuba diving, when that wasn't properly taken care of, that was a full removal of their own free will. They themselves were not invited to my life. They were not invited to be involved with anything and it automatically removed them permanently because they were not important enough at all to me. They might have thought otherwise. That's their fault. Because what they should have done when they had the opportunity to, as to the review now in 2022, is to looking back, if they could have actually made the correct choice back in 2009, and instead they decided to stir up needless drama, there are the facts. We are not friends. and I have no need for them. And they need to accept that because I also don't have any want regarding them. I don't have any desire regarding them. That's kind of another factor. So while the, those people might have the opinions that they are more valuable than what have you, that's their opinion in comparison. So in the time frame where they should have assisted correctly, instead they made the choices that they did. If they had anything to do with what happened in regards of the Fort Worth Zoo, because whether in regards of suing the zoo as was brought up, suing the school district as was brought up in comparison, well that's not acceptable. That was not an option because if they themselves had arranged needless problems, I was not willing to go forward with that. If I was accurate, that would be for those people to deal with the consequences of their choices instead. Which in turn, the facts are the facts. So if they were to claim 
that we were friends, well then where is what actually would genuinely benefit me? The answer for the lecture is there hasn't been that at all. While they might think otherwise, if that's a possibility for them to think, the answer that I have repeatedly brought forward is no. They have not done anything that would ever constitute what I would consider as acceptable. Because again, when it comes to my house that I was in and the time for my son and my daughter and I to be a family at the time frame of their developmental years, no, that cannot be done over, but it is done. No, that cannot be made up for in regards of that time, that's done. No, we cannot be friends because that's done. Because that cannot be undone. There is nothing my ex-in-laws could ever tell me would ever be of any value or worth. Same thing with my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister and or relatives of. There is nothing that those people could ever try to claim would ever actually be as to for the genuine best interest of me. At all. There is nothing at all that they could ever truthfully and verifiably do so. Because again, I was capable to discuss situations back in the year of 2000. Just because of being retaught the names of colors does not have to do anything in reference to situations of experiences that I could explain. That's common sense. Same thing in reference to counting to 10. That has nothing to do with actual experiences that I obviously would be capable and was capable to explain. So there is nothing in reference to my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, any connections thereof at all that would ever be worthwhile to me. As far as any of their wishful excuses, because I had told the truth back in 2000, but again, the names of colors have absolutely nothing to do with actual memories. Counting to 10 has nothing to do with actual memories of experiences. I don't think that I should have to explain that. However, in this lecture, due to the fact of certain levels of failures, I don't know if those people realistically are that ignorant to actually have to have that explained to them in this lecture. So, while sure I had to be retaught rank, again, that has absolutely nothing to do with memories regarding situations to my experiences. That's common sense. Just because during cognitive tests, I had been given a bunch of blocks to make a bunch of patterns and not being capable to do so, that is not the same thing as memories regarding experiences. You know what else has absolutely nothing to do with memories and experiences? Being told a bunch of damn words and going and remembering the damn words that have nothing to do with actual experiences. Experiences. What that does show is your lack of common sense to have any fucking intelligence, in my opinion, because what would remembering three stupid words have anything to do with actual aspects of the memories regarding experiences? What that does show is the lack of intelligence and the lack of worth in reference to non-medical professionals because there's nothing professional about those individuals in that particular reference. What that does show is your lack of willingness to actually do anything worthwhile with your existences because obviously you'd rather play in a sandbox 
with a bunch of boxes as far as little different colors in comparison to growing up and having real employment. Obviously, that wouldn't be anything of value of worth to your entire existence because if the only damn thing that you have the capability of finding worthwhile to do with your existence is playing with different colored blocks, obviously we are on different levels. In comparison. Thank you very much. However, I remained calm during each and every one of those cognitive weeks of tests in the year of 2000, in the year of 2001, in the year of 2002, in the year of 2003, into the year of 2004, before again in the year of 2009, in the year of 2010, in the year of 2011, in the year of 2012. Because what do blocks have anything to do with actual reality? except for individuals who apparently did not grow up from kindergarten or preschool because they'd rather play with multiple colored blocks instead of having a real job. My opinion? That has nothing to do with my headaches or migraines either. By the way, but those types you know, because those psychologists that weren't, you know, satisfied because the psychology degree required them to actually acknowledge their own failures, so they go and get into a different psychology level of, because that psychology level won't make them actually acknowledge their failures. But no matter what, the reality of any psychology degree in order for you to be capable to do anything, you'd actually have to acknowledge your failures. That requires that. That's part of psychology. What would make you think you'd ever be capable to actually assist anybody if you can't even acknowledge your own failures? I have gone over every aspect of every possible failure I could think of regarding myself. So in those particular references of those types of whatever label title you want to put on as far as that is concerned, if you do not acknowledge your own failures, then that is literally how how are you ever going to be intelligent enough to do anything worthwhile with your psychology degree other than that being an extremely expensive piece of toilet paper? One of the most expensive pieces of toilet paper when you actually think about it. And the largest amounts of waste of time, in my personal opinion, because of the amount of types of psychologists that have dealt with thinking they know better when it comes to dot, dot, dot type of guys who absolutely don't want, don't need, don't desire those types of individuals' involvements. Because those types get upset because the voices are raised in a discussion. After they go and stir up a bunch of needless drama, what is the one profession of a bunch of the most needless drama other than a psychologist or something along that social working sort of type because of the lack of worth that they actually have to actually take care of situations because of their own personal guilt that when they had the chance to actually make a difference in someone's life immediately they chose to be lazy thinking that they would do better in a different capacity instead of where they actually should have begun my opinion but because they wanted a piece of paper to feel special in comparison to the internal knowledge understanding and comprehension of actually accomplishing such because they would think that a damn piece of paper would actually translate to them being capable to assist more in comparison to where they actually would assist less because of the amount of time they'd waste trying to get a damn piece of paper for a degree. Because of the reality. So those types who want to try to fluffify 
and get upset when, you know, because I've dealt with a few, that when they get told that they're just a pug by someone who didn't graduate basic training, but has handled some stuff and doesn't feel like going into it because unlike some people, I internally have already dealt with it. It's those types of needless people regarding those damn psychologists thinking that they have a right to understand when realistically, they're just nosy bitches. They just want to know what is not their business. In my opinion, let me know which psychologist has ever actually accomplished something worthwhile at all. Let me know who they've actually assisted in a positive and correct way without fucking anything up. Let me know. I doubt that's a capacity of at all. I wouldn't be surprised because sure, you could have a talk show. That's nice. Uh-huh. If they're not actors, and maybe, sure, they could do something of whatever, but let's be honest on that. So, you know, one of the least valued professions, in my opinion, because there's nothing to value. Oh, you want to tell me your feelings about what I personally experienced? You're the dumbest waste of flesh, oxygen thief, I've ever met at that point, in my opinion. And then you got these guys actually going out to the VA and fluffifying the guys who actually you need to learn from. And instead of giving them guys to speak with that actually would be capable to discuss and relate, you give them a bunch of fluffy bunny, little sugar-coated pieces of trash, rolled in shit of fertilizer, and then sprinkled with some powdered sugar to then go and point some sprinkles out made of crap to then color those little sprinkles and be like, well, here's a psychologist. Go talk with the psychologist about what you did while you were overseas and they were at a college getting a piece of paper mm -hmm, that they could do that with, yes. Why don't you, who went and handled stuff, go and sit down in a room with someone who hasn't ever seen anything that you've done, hasn't ever been close to any, or though you are the closest that they'll ever get to that. And so, hmm, I wonder why psychologists do everything they possibly can to keep those guys in whatever, because that's the closest to a man or a woman or biological adult, they'll ever be allowed to be here. Because that's the closest they'll ever get to that in comparison. And who's the clingiest, whiniest, temper tantrumiest types? Those types of psychologists that just need to let it go. Because, you know, those types who think that they're more special at being a psychologist than they are. Because if they actually were worthwhile, they'd actually accomplish something. Think about what a psychologist's job is. You pay them through the insurance company plus your deductible for you to talk with them. That's, that's their job. And then you pay them to tell you what they think about that. They don't necessarily have any suggestions. They don't necessarily have any insight. They want you to speak with them and tell them your feelings about your experiences that they themselves don't have because they themselves don't have feelings about your experiences because they're your experiences in comparison. And so when they don't get their way, they throw a little temper tantrum with other ones that do that and then they wonder why nobody really likes them.
Because maybe if they didn't stir up a bunch of needless drama because they think they're more important than they are, that's why it should have remained a pseudoscience because it's not a real science as far as those types, in my opinion. That's why they've had to go into the psychiatric and other sorts of whatever because they themselves know that without the psychiatric portion, they wouldn't have a damn job. But those aspects of the psychiatric portions where they fail to pay attention to the facts that you can't use prescriptions to cover up the reality. You have to actually work through it. I mean, that's what the job description is for a psychologist to assist people to work through things in comparison. Otherwise, they're just a failure. My opinion. And so while my ex-in-laws might think I'd care enough to actually assist, why would I? They're my ex-in-laws. They don't, they, they didn't prove any correct care when it came to the situations. So we don't have any need for one another. They have hypothetically more of a need for me, but I don't have that same need. I don't have that want and I don't have that desire. If I did, well then, um, situations would have been different. It wouldn't have been as easy for me to not be involved. That's kind of the thing that they needed to understand. So, which is something Grandpa Nichols warned them about. Grandpa Nichols went on and on warning my ex-in-laws about this sort of garbage. He warned them. Just as he warned them about the dress blues, he warned them. But those types thinking they're more special than they were or anything like that, how they wanted to feel something, apparently. And so those situations. because they thought. So here's the reality. My scuba diving is my scuba diving. I haven't wanted to discuss my scuba diving because I haven't had the need to. Here's that type of a problem. Those types of people who think that they have a right to something that they don't have a right to. And then stirring up needless drama because they have feelings. And instead of just being adults, having maturity, having etiquette, and having respect, to just ask the one and only, stirring up needless drama to the point where why would it matter to me what anyone would want to know if they don't have the common sense, common courtesy, etiquette, and respect to actually be mature enough as a biological adult with etiquette and respect to actually ask me in the correct capacity of. It's common sense. So those types of individuals, if that has anything to do with either side, whether my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister and or connections thereof and or my ex-in-laws and or connections thereof, regarding those particular factors in the immediate to six degrees out, I am not interested. And I have the right to. It's none of their business, and if it actually was, which they know it wasn't their business, because if it actually was their business, they would have asked me, and that's why they didn't. As well as their own guilty consciences for the choices that they made, hypothetically. Because there is the U-Haul's gear situation. Obviously. But that would require for me to actually be cared about instead of what occurred because in order to actually care about me well again that requires a few things and that is a reality so while some people might think that certain aspects of what they've done would be showing genuine care no i've reiterated it's not what actually would be as far as specific years and specific times, 
obviously didn't occur. So, in regards of the progression forward, what would actually be is what would actually be to prove that in comparison to the situations that have occurred. So I have made multiple attempts and instead, yet again, another failure after a failure after a failure and another failure instead of what would actually be beneficial for me. So this is going on the length of time that it is as to those individuals' failures. Because while they might wish to try to claim that they made a genuine attempt, no, they didn't. That's the facts. Because if they did make an actual attempt that would require speaking with in truth not stirring up needless drama wrongly. Because that's the difference. If you supposedly actually care, you actually speak with in etiquette and respect in comparison to stirring up the needless drama. But that's my ex in laws. They liked those late night soap opera movie shows. That's my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and those relative connections, same thing. Because while I wasn't allowed to watch anything above a G-rated show, that's me. My biological sister and I were not raised the same way, obviously. So you can take in consideration the differences. Because common sense So, you know, those factors that have been needed to pay attention to. So while those people in Illinois might have goaded on my biological sister of, oh, we know how people are from New Jersey. Well, if you think that the situations at the time frame between 2000 through 2022 regarding other people's choices as to what people, true New Jerseyans are, no, not at all in the same capacity. And then, you know, well, how do you make a boss? Well, yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, because I live in truth. So, you know, just as the facts. And so while my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister and their whatevers had the capacity in what would have actually been comfortable for me instead to actually get to know me, they made the choices that they made. And that was their failures this whole time. Patterns of behavior. So 1980s into 1990s, you have the technological viewpoint of that pattern of behavior of types. Then you have the 1980s to the 1990s, early 1990s, to the year 2000 and that aspect of patterns of behaviors to those types. You already though have the 1940s to the 1980s as far as certain patterns of behavior regarding those types in regards of use of technology. So then in the year of 2000 to 2005, that's one type as far as looking at patterns of behavior for a 
proverbial breakdown of time to find these patterns of behaviors in more intricate ways. 2005 to 2010, same thing. 2010 to 2015, same thing. And 2015 to 2020, same thing. That gives so many breakdowns as far as the patterns of behavior as to who actually makes genuine attempts in comparison to those who prefer to just stir up needless drama. Because here's the factors as from the time frame of my updates to now through my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, also www.ladydorybell.com. While there might be the facts of certain situations, however you view it, it doesn't change the fact that they're the facts of the situations. So those 10 commandments, honesty, integrity, and those factors up in the references regarding this, as to the review, especially in regards of since the COVID 2009 or 2020 situation, well, if hypothetically in those regards where my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, and ex-in-laws did not have the legal authority. So let's say my ex-in-law David and Mary Sandra and Ariel Osteen thought that they had the right to, to anything. They legally could not speak with my dead ex-husband about it. He had no authority to do so, ever. Legally, he had no authority. Legally, he had no right to ever make any situations regarding myself. However, the irony of ironies, me being the one and only executrix, because it had to be at the specific time. So while, yes, my daughter was alive, she doesn't count because I have been alive. Biological adult, her wishful would have use regarding other people that has been invalid since the day of his death regarding my biological daughter. She has been considered invalid regarding the executrix situation since the day of his death because of the facts that I have been alive and remain alive and I did not give that transferable power ever at any point in time. One and only executrix, which translates to all of the wishful aspects haven't ever been allowed. Which has been a problem that my ex-in-laws have needed to accept. But I have been kind as to allowing them to go in other directions, just not mine. I have been far kinder in regards of any ex, obviously, just in reference of the year 2008, but those ungrateful individuals that did not ever have the common sense to ever have any gratitude in any capacity of, Grandpa Nichols warned them. So, those factors as to how not one point in time have they ever expressed actual gratitude to me for my work in any capacity in what would be considered acceptable, of course. You know, etiquette and respect, common sense. Those references comparatively to what someone might think would be considered acceptable. Hypothetically, I guess it depends on how you were trained by whichever female of. Hypothetically. So, that wasn't ever allowed when it comes to my blue ID card. 
But my ex sister in law, Susie Marie Nichols Lopez, had said that, and this is true, had said that she called Grandpa Nichols medically retarded because she didn't ever see any value to his employment when he was in the Army or what he could ever do that was worthwhile as a veteran. That was what my ex sister in law's who would go over Grandma Nichols and Grandpa Nichols' house as far as after being an adult and all that sort of stuff, completely ungrateful for her entire existence because of Grandpa Nichols, and yet wanted to leech off of. Who would be in that definition of at that point, realistically? Because when you take in consideration those particular factors, who would be in that definition at that point? I would guesstimate more so my ex-sister-in-law, Susie Marie, at that time, Nichols Lopez, though now Sweeney. Because realistically, why would you ever consider yourself to ever be good enough to be better? In comparison, that would require certain experiences to be capable to actually instead and in regards of the merging and the federal aspects because of that blue ID card situation and how I've explained the problems regard. well, I mean, there is when her uh, youngest son was alive, as far as what I had been informed, um, she did utilize her two daughters and her son's social security numbers as far as after she had declared bankruptcy. Which is funny because bankruptcy and breeder both start with the letter B. So anyway, um, then again, you know, if you grew up hanging out with Sir and Tyson guys in the 1980s, 1990s, that's not mean. That's the truth. I mean, let me channel my inner guys from that because that's just, that was just sharp. You know, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but you'd have to know which groups of gays and, you know, hey girl, hey, that's called spilling the tea, because that's the alley. It's very hot. It's Because, you know, you have to grow up with certain types. For that to be natural. And so for it to be that natural, you know which mm, I was around. Because it wasn't just my babysitter's son. Mm -mm, no, no. Mm -mm. Those who remember the 1980s and 1990s in regards of certain areas, certain scenes. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is for a glitter fight, and let me tell you, that's not as pretty as it sounds. Mmm, no, mm -mm. glitter fights, mm -mm. Mm -mm. because it's not really a fight where they throw glitter, it's they're fighting and glitter goes everywhere. <laughs> and then they get angry because usually it's the good glitter. You don't know. Unless you know. And so, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Especially if the glitter gets near the feathers. And they weren't supposed to be near those feathers. Because, you know, sure, you could go get different feathers, but if they're specialty feathers, you don't know. You have to know to know, and if you don't know, you don't know. I can remember. <laughs> sure, you might have more modern references. You don't have the 1980s, 1990s New York City references. Because that's a different, that's a different, different. <laughs> It's a whole other mm -mm sort of thing.
just think, like, they willingly throw confetti in the streets on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, for any possibility of. That's normal, so you don't know glitter fights, because that's just for a celebration. <laughs> That doesn't even go into the like actual, actual. Oh, <laughs> mm, no, you don't know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to put that in words other than glitter fights. Cause, mm, mm hmm. And then how that goes. And just think that's literally the truth. They're willing to do this. So, mm -mm, you don't know. Mm -mm. Especially when it comes to the good feathers. Uh uh, no. No, 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 mm, no, not the good feathers. Like if they were made that way or whatever, but if they weren't made that way and it didn't have the particular enhancement in regards of because it has to be done equally. I'm just saying I may have known a guy or two or a few and that is what it is. <laughs> Today is the 19th of May, 2022, and so, you know, I just figured this just works. <laughs> I learned how to dress myself because I was around some awesome people when I was a child and a teenager. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Give homage where I came from. It's not my fault. <laughs> But I do give credit where credit's due, obviously, because I was born and raised in New Jersey. I may not remember everybody's name, but people know. They know who by they know how by they know. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hypothetically, especially 1980s, 1990s. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Sure, I have to learn the different names and colors, whatever. <laughs> I still know how to dress myself. <laughs> Take care of stuff as best as I can. So you guys have a good day. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, also known as www.ladydorybell.com. Subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like and share my official YouTube videos. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, monologue, whatever multitude of words that could be considered as. And if you go to leave a comment, please do make sure to have etiquette and respect. You guys have a good day. The 19th of May, 2022.